Johnny Mag with your daily comedy news. I think I straightened out the sound on the new computer. Close enough, anyway. Late Night is off this week, so let's start with the Emmy nominations. Outstanding comedy series. Your nominees are Abbott Elementary, Barry, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Hacks, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Only Murders in the Building, Ted Lasso, what We Do in the Shadows, that's a heck of a category. I feel like the Ted Lasso wave has calmed down and Barry will be the choice, but that's just a guess. What do I know? Outstanding lead actress in a comedy series. Rachel Brosnahan, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Quinta Brunson, Abbott Elementary. Katie Kuko, The Flight Attendant. Ellie Fanning, The Great. Issa Rae for Insecure. Gene Smart for Hacks. Feel like, hmm. I'm going to go Gene Smart there, but what do I know? Outstanding lead actor in a comedy series, Donald Glover for Atlanta, Bill Hader for Barry, Nicholas Holtz for The Great, Steve Martin, Only Murders in the Building, Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building, they'll split the vote, Jason Sudeikis for Ted Lasso, I'm going to say Bill Hader. I feel like a Barry wave is going to happen. Outstanding Variety Talk series, Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Last Week Tonight, John Oliver, Late Night with Seth Meyers, Late Show with Stephen Colbert, I will predict Trevor Noah, Outstanding Variety Sketch Series, A Black Lady Sketch Show, Saturday Night Live, and that's it. Pick one. I don't know. (laughs) Really? Only two? Outstanding Variety Special Live, the 64th Annual Grammy Awards. Remember, those were hosted by Trevor Noah. That's why I'm mentioning it. Live in front of a studio audience, the facts of life and different strokes. The Oscars, remember that? There was this whole thing with Will Smith and Chris Rock. Did you see it? Did you hear about it? Also in the category, the Super Bowl halftime show and the Tony Awards. Outstanding variety special. All right. Adele. Dave Chappelle, the closer. See what backlash happens there. Uh, Harry Potter, 20th anniversary. And Norm MacDonald's Nothing Special. I think Norm is going to get it, right? You're not going to vote for Chappelle this year. Plus, that special was amazing. Norm McDonald, I'll go with Norm. Oh, wait, there's more. One last time, an evening with Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga. Oh, sorry, Norm, you just got blown off the stage by the voters. Sorry. Outstanding a supporter actor in a comedy series. Anthony Carrigan for Barry. Brett Goldstein for Ted Lasso. Toheeb Jimmo for Apple Presents, a Doozer production in association with Warner Brothers Television. I don't know what that is, but okay. Nick Muhammad for Ted Lasso. Tony Shaloub for Mrs. Maisel. Tyler James Williams for Abbott Elementary. Henry Winkler for Barry. Bowen Yang on SNL. Let's give it to Henry Winkler. Outstanding supporting actress in a comedy series. Alex Borstein, a marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Hannah Einbinder for Hacks, Janelle James for Abbott Elementary, Kate McKinnon, SNL, Sarah Niles, Ted Lasso, Cheryl Lee Ralph, Abbott Elementary, Juno Temple, Ted Lasso, Hannah Winningham, Ted Lasso, so the Ted Lasso splits the vote. Let's give it to Kate. Nice send off for Kate's SNL career and outstanding animated program. We have Arcane on Netflix, Rick and Morty, great show on Adult Swim, The Simpsons, we all know what that is, What If on Marvel, and... Bob's Burgers. Now I'm going to ask you a couple questions. One, have you ever seen Bob's Burgers? You haven't. Two, have you ever met anyone who has seen Bob's Burgers? You didn't. Uh, The Bob's Burgers movie, did you see it? No, you didn't. I predict Bob's Burgers wins an Emmy as part of the long con. Fast Company reviewed Bill Burr's new special. You'll find that on Netflix. I have not had an opportunity to watch it yet. Fast Company writes, he's angry, mainly at women. They used exclamation points. That's why I'm shouting. That's how that works. And his position on most issues boils down to both sides bad. Although it's undoubtedly due in part to the highly charged moment which his new special arrives, Burr's both sides shtick has never felt more threadbare or calculated than it does now. Uh Uh-oh. First comes the pandemic material. Burr is fed up with both kinds of COVID hypocrites, the patriots who didn't trust a government vaccine, and the safety evangelists who pulled their masks down in public sometimes. The problem isn't that it's wrong to joke about folks who are annoying about masks. It's that Burr doesn't actually have any jokes about them. He just cites their existence as proof that America is a fiercely divided country, one in which both sides bad. Burr then segues from the pandemic to cancel culture because there must be a clause in every Netflix contract requiring comedians to vote part of their special to the topic. But Burr's definition of it is intentionally vague. It's not the jailing of serial sex criminals like Harvey Weinstein, which Burr's in favor of, but pretty much every instance of a powerful man getting called out in any capacity in the years since. According to Burr, after all the bad men were rounded up, a thing that definitely happened. Some undefined they use this new tool called cancel culture to get rid of some men that maybe were in your way. I'm not sure that Fast Company understands what a comedy special is. 
The jokes are not always based in reality. The jokes are based in getting an emotional response out of the audience. Bert recalls the day in 2019 when a bunch of people got fired up about a resurfaced 1971 Playboy interview in which actor John Wayne, who died in 79, said some racist things. They were mad about it on Twitter and then nothing happened, nothing at all. Yet Burr points to that moment as proof that both the hashtag MeToo movement and cancel culture have gone too far. Burr first debuted his bit about John Wayne while hosting SNL in late 2020. Apparently nothing happened in the year that followed to convince him to update his act for the special. Well, not exactly nothing. He also mentions the horrible thing that happened when Sean Connery died. Some people on Twitter brought up Connery's past comments about hating women. That's it. They didn't burn Sean Connery in effigy, nor did they organize and agitate to have his movies banned from HBO Max or whatever. They tweeted briefly. Skipping ahead. In the wake of the Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe v. Wade, there's a reason few people are likely to share the abortion bit from Burr's new special. He's pro-choice, but he still thinks it's killing a baby. And why George Carlin's decades-old material on the topic keeps going viral? It's because Carlin understood that sometimes you have to pick a side. Sounds like Fast Company does not like Bill Burr's new special. I haven't seen it yet, so I don't know. Hey, Pete Davidson is the new face of Manscaped. You know, the men's grooming company where you clean some stuff up? That one? Complex writes, to kick off the partnership, Pete Davidson is tasked with trying to come up with a tagline. Here's what he came up with. Let's show them how hairless we could be, boys. He also alludes to having a hot date later. Presentation matters. Don't make me get specific because I will. I've been using this guy long enough to where I think it's time we go into business together. Pete Davidson is also now a shareholder in the company. All right, I told you yesterday, and I'm telling you again about the cool new podcast app, Circa, C-E-R-C-A. You like to travel, don't you? Well, Circa kicked off with these incredible podcast guides to places all around the world, like London, Barcelona, L.A., Iceland. I was actually looking into another trip to Iceland just yesterday. Too expensive. Rome and more. Circa comes from the same people who created Passport, which is another excellent travel podcast. Inside, there are stories about food, fashion, culture, history, art, sports, everything you want to know, whether you're trying to plan the perfect trip or just want to learn about someplace new. Circa is written and hosted by locals. These are people that really know the place. So when Andres in Barcelona tells you about the bar to watch an FC Barca game with the best fans in the city... You know that's an experience you want to have. Amen. Take a spin through Circa. Hear about the best meals in Barcelona, what it was like to live through the Blitz in London, what to do with your kids in L.A., which just came in handy to me last weekend, and how to dress to fit in Paris, which will never come in handy to me. And I've been to Paris, but I'm not going to fit in. What am I wearing today? I'm wearing a gray T-shirt that says, I paused my game to be here, and I'm wearing some uh, shorts that are a little dirty because I was doing some yard work, and my backup running sneakers, which are wet because I was doing some yard work. So you can do whatever you want with a fashion guide in Paris. Not for me. Maybe for you, though. Find out for yourself. Subscribe to Circa Podcast. That's C-E-R-C-A. Wherever you get your podcasts or download the Circa app from the App Store for a limited time, it's all free. Some more recommendations for you. Daniel Ritchie posted on the Facebook group, which is Daily Comedy News Podcast Group. Before I tell you what Daniel said to listen to, uh, I have been slacking on the social media for about a week, both on the Facebook group and the subreddit. So I've been traveling. My TV broke. I had to connect that. My computer broke, which you've heard about. So I've just been busy with work and social media was the part that fell apart. But I'm back to posting articles, baby. Yes, if you go on the Facebook group, I posted some stuff just yesterday. Any Anyway, I digress. Daniel Ritchie said, guys, the newest episode of Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend with the return of Dana Carvey is hysterical. I haven't laughed out loud this much in a podcast in a long time. You have to check it out. Well, I did check it out, Daniel Ritchie. I went for a five mile run, humble brag, and I wanted something to listen to. And I listened to that. And you are right, my friend. It is hilarious. Dana breaks out this character, which is like outraged comedian who's made a lot of money in his life. Very, very funny bit. So check that out. Thank you, Daniel Ritchie, for participating in the Facebook group, which is Daily Comedy News Podcast Group. You are all encouraged to participate in the group. Uh, also, Tim Heidecker was on the Good One podcast. I haven't listened to it yet, but I shared an article about it on the aforementioned Facebook group, and it's probably the next podcast I will listen to. But having read some of the excerpts, he poked at Jim Brewer, Joe Rogan, Dave Chappelle, John Mulaney. I'll be picking at that article over the next few episodes, but too busy today. And... Hey, Becky, thanks. Becky went to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news, and Becky bought me a coffee. Thank you, Becky. 
I really needed the coffee this morning, Becky. The wife stayed over at her parents' house, so it was just me and the dogs, and the dogs did not like that the wife wasn't home. They were prancing up and down, and oh, it, just, it was a nightmare. It's like, guys, can we go to sleep? And dogs woke me up like every half hour, so I really needed a coffee this morning. So thank you, Becky, who went to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news. From Yahoo, J.B. Smoove is to pay homage to six black comedians in a comedy docuseries podcast for Audible. It's called Funny My Way. The comedians he will pay homage to are Peter White, Dick Gregory, Flip Wilson, Red Fox, and that's only four. Oh, here are the other two. Rudy Ray Moore and Moms Mabley. I'm leaving that in. That was funny. It will shine a light on everyday struggles in the black community, and these iconic comedians fight for equality while being their authentic raw selves. It'll give listeners an impactful look into comedy history, one that goes far beyond the punchlines. Sounds really cool. My issue is... I need a J.B. Smoove timeout because of those casino commercials that he's in. They're really loud and they're screaming in them. And I don't enjoy J.B. Smoove's performance in the casino commercials. If you're especially in the Northeast, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. Podcast sounds cool, but I don't know. J.B. Smoove might need a break. Speaking of podcasts, Bobby Lee recently shared the story of when an up-and-coming musician mistook Bobby Lee for record producer and DJ Steve Aoki. Bobby Lee was on the Tiger Belly podcast, and he said an unknown but talented musician walked up to him and called him Steve. Lee said he corrected the woman by telling her his name was Bobby, but she repeated the name Steve once again (laughs) and said to Bobby Lee, you know, you remix one of our songs and I just want to tell you it was really dope. They found a picture of Lee and Aoki together, and the host said, I think this is probably what confused her. Who is Steve Aoki in this picture? Bobby Lee highlighted the obvious difference between the two and said, so Steve went on a donut binge? Is that what happened? In six months, he just went to Dunkin' Donuts every meal? I mean, come on. Yeah, seriously, what kind of person goes to Dunkin' Donuts every meal? I only go twice a day. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Another way you can support the show is be a premium subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Five bucks a month, first month free. You get the episodes a little early. And by little early, I mean late afternoon, the day before official release. And those releases are commercial free. Or you can buy me a coffee.com slash daily comedy news. Or don't do any of that. That's cool. See you tomorrow.